Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N. Y, and the second word is and, spelled A-N-D, and the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. I met a woman recently, and I asked her if she had any miracles in her life that she could share. I told her about our books and our radio show. And I asked her if she noticed that when she asked God for uh, inspirations or wisdom uh, about things that she's doing during the day or during her life, uh, if she notices that God does send her messages, uh, mental messages, like inspirations and ideas. And she responded with, uh, sadly, she said, I used to believe in miracles and I used to believe in God, but primarily because of the state of affairs in my life and how things have turned out for me, not favorable in my life, but also as I look around, she said, and see all of the evil on the planet, I can't believe that there's a God anymore because God allows all these evil things to happen. And uh, I, I, a lot of people say things like this, and so I, I said, can I give you my perspective from what I've learned in my life and from what people have told me? And she said, sure, give it a shot. So I asked God to inspire me, and I responded with the following thing. Um, I said, first, let me cover what other people have told me in my life that helped me, because I understand your points. You made two valid points. Uh, the first point I'd like to respond to is all the evil that exists in, in the planet and probably in the entire universe these days. Uh, the best answer I've been given in my life is if you go back to what people believe, what the Bible tells us in the beginning, you know, God had created everything and uh, turned it over to us, uh, made us and turned things over to us, and we were supposed to do certain things, to use it, to benefit, to enjoy, and to have a wonderful life. And what happened is that mankind has allowed things to become the way they are, uh, we all have free will, so that's that's the beginning of the problem. Is you know we are not robots, all programmed to be perfect, goody goody two shoes. Uh, we are all humans, and we have desires, and um, we have hopes and dreams, and um, some of us take advantage of other people, and so we are the we are the reason that the world is in the state it's in. And God's available, and if we ask God to inspire us, we ask God to help us. Uh, we have evidence, uh, 10,000 saints in the last 2,000 years. We've had 10,000 people who did ask God what to do and did what God told them to do and with remarkable results. So the answer seems to be 
what we have to do is keep asking God what to do, and we get inspired by him on what courses of action to take, and that would make the world a better place. But the less that people pray, and as time goes on, more and more people are ignoring God and not praying, that is why, basically, that's the simplest foundational reason of about why the world is in the state it's in and why mankind is in the state it's in, because people are not asking God what to do, and that it was always God's plan in the Garden of Eden. Uh, he told people not to eat of the tree of knowledge because he wanted people to come to him and ask him what to do. And if you read the Bible, you know, there's 20,000 conversations going on in the Bible He's talking to people 20,000 times. They've asked him what to do. He told them what to do with wonderful, promising results. So I could talk more about that, but basically the foundational main reason and the main answer as to why the world is in the state of affairs it's in is primarily very simple. We have stopped asking God what to do. We've stopped asking him for inspirations. And when he sends us ideas and he sends us inspirations, we ignore him. Now, for the second question uh, or, or problem where people are saying, uh, how do we know that God really exists? Um, a few years ago, I met a man who told me uh, when that question comes up, a very good answer for that question is as follows. And here's what he told me to think about, and I offer it to other people, and it seems to help. He said, imagine that you're the only person on the planet Earth and the whole universe exists the way it does right now. But uh, you're the only person on the planet Earth, and you're walking along, and you're walking through the desert. Uh, and you've been walking in the desert for a long, long time, and suddenly you notice uh, laying on the floor, laying on the sand, a wristwatch. And the wristwatch is ticking, and the, the arms or the second hand is moving, and you can hear it ticking. And you're, you think you're the only person on the planet. Um, you really believe that. You haven't seen anybody else in a long, long time. Say several years, you haven't seen anybody. Uh, and now you stumble upon this thing, a wristwatch. And you look at it, uh, you hear it ticking, um, and you take it apart. And you find all these little wheels inside with teeth that turn each other. As you're taking it apart, you can see how they're moving. Uh, now, if you look at that watch and you think that uh, that was part of the Big Bang Theory, you think that, you know, the reason why everything exists is because of all these elements uh, in the universe simply collided one day, and when they collided, they they caused creation to happen. And one of the things that happened was this wristwatch was created because of the Big Bang Theory. And you look at the sun and the moon, and you look at the desert, and... Uh, Maybe there's some reflective uh, materials in the desert and you realize you're looking in a mirror and you see what you look like. So if you think that what you look like with eyes and a nose and a mouth uh, and two legs and two arms and five fingers on each hand, so if you think you just came to be by a Big Bang Theory, um, by a moment in time where elements smashed into each other, and you think this wristwatch was all put together by that, and there's nobody else on the planet. If you think that that's what happened, and there's no greater being, higher authority, wiser authority that uh, put it all together and created you the way he did, you put your head on that, that position in your body, he didn't put your head under your foot, uh, Big Bang Theory wouldn't assemble things so so creatively the way the human body is put together. And there, certainly a, a wristwatch uh, wouldn't just get fault together because of a Big Bang Theory. So that helps you to understand there has to be a great force, a great power that has wisdom, not just two things banging together in the Big Bang Theory. And furthermore, uh, the other thing that is helpful is to think of this. When people talk about the Big Bang Theory and that these particles or materials suddenly smash into each other, they fail to tell us who created the materials that just smashed into each other. So they say the materials create the Big Bang, but who made the materials that are participating in the Big Bang? So that's why the Big Bang Theory does not explain that there is no God. If it does anything, it explains that maybe that's the way how 
the God we are talking about decided to make things by, you know, crashing and banging things into each other. However, I believe a wise, intelligent being would not need to smash things together in order to create the perfect, wonderful human being form. And furthermore, he made us male and female, and we procreate. We have children. Uh, that kind of wisdom couldn't all happen just because of the Big Bang Theory. Well, these answers were very helpful to me in my life, and she said they were helpful to her as well. And we both agreed that at least there's one thing we can do. We can keep asking God questions in our mind and going with the inspirations he sends back. If we do that, as my two books prove conclusively, if we do that, we will be experiencing miracles, and that will convince us there's a God. In other words, simply stated, if you ask God what to do and you get an inspiration and do it and it turns into a miracle, you don't have to do that very often to believe there's a God. It only takes about, I think, one day of asking him things. After one day, you'll be convinced he exists because he gives you great answers that create miracles. Our next coincidence miracle is from a woman who tells us that when she's traveling out of town or out of state on business or vacations, she typically finds coins, uh, primarily pennies or dimes, uh, and she finds them in conspicuous places because they're not off off the path, off the, off the uh, common paths. She finds them like a, as she's entering a hotel, there it is right in the middle of the doorway on, on the ground, um, or she's walking down a sidewalk, it's right in front of her path, apparently, you know, in the center of the path. It stands out that it's not just strewn, but that these pennies and dimes uh, she finds are positioned, they're placed there is the way they look to her. And she's so used to this happening when she's traveling out of town or out of state that she takes these to be coincidence miracles of a sort. Uh, she doesn't know everybody's definition of that, but when I asked if she noticed any coincidence miracles, this is what she offers. Uh, so I And I've met a couple of people in my life beside her, so I think a total of three people that I remember telling me similar stories. In her case, she sees mainly pennies or dimes, and not, you know, not a group of them, but, you know, just one sitting there dead center in, in her pathway. So, you know, whatever shows you that there's a God is the, the key. You know, God uses different ways to reach different people. And in this woman's case, she's absolutely confident that God is doing this for her to show her that God is with her and part of her life. I met another couple at a, a park. They were looked to be about age 30. And I asked them if they had any coincidence miracles they could share, and they certainly perked up. Turns out their husband and wife, uh, they're, they're both doctors. Uh, she's in obstetrics, uh, which is the business of delivering babies. Uh, and she says uh, she's delivered hundreds of babies, and she sees miracles every day in that process by the process of giving birth. And uh, he's a cardiologist, a surgeon, uh, and he sees many miracles as well. I asked them if they get inspirations or ideas while they're doing their work. Uh, do they notice God participating with them in these miracles? And both of them resoundingly said, absolutely, there are many miracles that would never happen if they weren't getting inspired from God on what to do at the right moment. Well, our stories today remind me that the Bible says only one thing is necessary. It's in the book of Luke chapter 10. Book of Luke chapter 10 says only one thing is necessary. That thing is just keep asking God what to do and do what God is inspiring you to do. And if you do that, keep asking God what to do and doing what he's telling you, you will experience miracles. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.